Dr. Rallo, it would seem in a population with high rates of hypertension and diabetes, these machines are wonderful. They could deliver right on time health information, constantly monitored, without anybody actually having to do very much. Uh, yet adoption seems to be a little slow. Well, things take time, but uh, just, I think, seeing the things that technology can do draws people in that direction. And, and in particular, people with chronic illness have a difficult time making behavior change and knowing where they're at with respect to the outcomes of that behavior change in ways that technology can help dramatically with. So again, that's the promise of things. That's what I think pulls patients, providers, communities along in that direction. And we're seeing, I think, movement. The technology is becoming increasingly available and the increasing use of those technologies by providers and patients as, the, as things develop. One of the uh, great gifts of the electronic age is that it just generates a tremendous amount of information. But I, when I was watching those people having their um, blood pressure monitored, I was thinking, all right, it's developing the information. Who's getting it? And is anybody checking it? If you create a system where more people can have their blood sugar checked through the day, have their heart rate and blood pressure checked through the day, the blood sugar, um, is there anybody who's going to be checking it so that we know Mr. Gonzalez actually is at, he's, as he sits down to dinner is already suffering from a pretty high blood sugar level. Uh, there has to be somebody on the other end saying, uh-oh, time to call them. Well, I, you know, I, uh, I think it was already mentioned that we're moving toward new models of care, one of them being called the medical home and a primary care doctor uh, has a team around him in the medical home where patients would be connected to one place that coordinates their care. And uh, it's not just the doctor, it would be more uh, allied uh, health uh, uh, nurses and, and uh, others uh, accepting the information and packaging the information for, for the medical record when the doctor sees the patient. Um, and then being able to see those red alerts or red flags uh, and know who to call. So um, just like we have 800 numbers, for example, the, 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 the medical care of the future that goes along with capturing more information is going to have to be a broader team approach. I think that 800 number is a good example because mm -hmm. when you call it, you can't talk to a person. It's really um, this new thing that's been created for you to access information uh, call big institutions and get where you need to go, but it also involves a lot of non-human contact. No, but I, I think for health, it's very. It's uh, there has to be that human contact to, to to be able to get back to, to especially to those in the homes who are going to need to to be reassured that if there's a red flag or something that you know that they have to go, uh, you know, into their clinic or into their medical home. Well, as we electronicize care. medicine, can we keep it high touch? High tech and high touch at the same time? You know, to be a little bit of the devil's advocate in this, um, you know, a lot of these peripherals that they're called, all of this wonderful, t you know, we, we're, you know, a country that stands in line for the new, um, you know, iPad 4 or whatever. We're fascinated by gadgets. So I've seen this pro proliferation at every health IT conference of just millions of things that you could use to enhance. And you're right, that's marketed to a demographic that, um, you know, is probably not the cost driver in the system. So how do you, you know, get underserved communities? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in academics, they've, you know, they're constantly developing these ideas of using a cell phone to manage someone's hypertension in the community. And I say, well, folks in my community, in the poor community that I live in, you know, their phone's on, it's pay as you go, you know, um, this peripheral that will plug into their computer, well, they can't afford the ISP or they may not have a computer. Now, that doesn't mean it's not a huge opportunity. One of the strategies we're using that's also sort of the merging of workforce is training community health workers mm -hmm. to use these tools in the community to do home visits. It's a very 
low cost, high impact opportunity to both train people to what this potential is, but also gather data on something as simple as, you know, a PDA, uh, you know, whatever personal device, gather that data and upload it into the patient's personal record. And one thing we haven't really addressed here is the personal health record. And that is going to be an opportunity because as much as I see it evolving, I don't see multi-language ones evolving for sure that allow people to begin to manage their own information, add their own, you know, if you have one and have those opportunities, giving input that someone took my blood pressure today and it was this or I checked my blood sugar and I'm gonna keep track of it very simply uh, in this way, and my doctor can take a look at it because I'm gonna put it in my personal health record. All that's evolving, but we, we have a big leap before all of those things really have an impact, I think. Mm -hmm. And patient-centered medical home, as Elena said, mm -hmm. is gonna be the hope for keeping the touch mm -hmm. in healthcare, I think. 